Мерси. Здравейте. <laughs> Можете ли моя презентация на английски, защото моя български не е добър? <laughs> I hope that my pronunciation for Bulgarian language is okay. <laughs> so as you see, my name is uh, Nabih Zbidi. It's with H, not with H, Nabih. But because Nabih in Bulgarian language, that means another thing. <laughs> it's totally different. <laughs> so I... <laughs> So the headline of my presentation, I want to start with this. It's 3W, www. It's not a website or something about internet, but why I choose this, but why it's in red color also, we will see. Okay. Uh, so the first W, who am I? Okay, as I say, my name is Nabi, Nabi, not Nabi, <laughs> Zbidi, <laughs> and I am Tunisian citizen. Uh, I got my university uh, diploma in Tunis in 2005 in uh, planning in urbanism and uh, planning towns. After that, I started to work, so I have uh, some experience, work experience. And my last job was in uh, the national office in SOS Children's Village, Tunisia. It's famous enough, so I don't need to pre present the SOS Children's Village more. So, as I said, that, uh, and uh, now I am a student in master's degree in uh, the new Bulgarian University in uh, international relations and comparative politics. And it's okay, now I am in second semester and I'm happy that I am Bulgaria. I don't regret that I am Bulgaria and I think I will not regret it in the future. The second W, it's why Bulgaria? It's from Tunisia to Bulgaria. So, in reality, I chose Bulgaria for three things. I chose Bulgaria thanks to the NBU, the New Bulgarian University. And why I, ch I chose the New Bulgarian University? It's about three reasons also. <laughs> the first one, because I really appreciate this master. The second one, this master, International Nations and Comparative Politics in, in French language. And as you know, uh, French language is the second language in Tunisia. The first one is uh, Arabic. So for me, it's easier to speak French and to study in French. And the third reason is thanks to Professor Antoni Todorov. He is too famous in NBU and uh, in Bulgaria. I have met uh, Professor Antoni Gol uh, Todorov <laughs> in uh, April 2012 in a forum of universities in Tunis, the capital of Tunisia. And he told me about this master, that is in French, that's very nice. And then I ask myself, why not? Why don't uh, try my best? Why don't try my chance to go to Bulgaria and to study this master? And sometimes, uh, small details can change our life. Because in that uh, moment, it was the 7 April 2012, it was a Saturday, as I remember. I was my uh, with my brother, and uh, I say, no, it's okay, it's uh, too far to go there to this forum, I don't want to go. He, no, 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 you can try, no problem, you can. So I go with my brother. I met, uh, as I told you, my uh, uh, Professor Antoni Todorov, and now I'm in Bulgaria. And I don't regret, so sometimes some small details can change our life, professional or academic. Uh, the third W for the headline, it's what? What is different? What's different between Bulgaria and Tunisia? In reality, we don't, I don't find too many big differences between the two countries. We share too many things. For example, uh, the, both countries are uh, small, about geography. We share too many things about history. We, th we have some uh, old building from the Romanian period in Bulgaria and in Tunisia, and from the Ottoman period also. So, and another thing, it's, <laughs> it's about the very cold winter in Sofia. It's minus seven and minus 10, and it's, I don't have, uh, this uh, experience with the winter, and I saw the first time in my life the snow in uh, Sofia. It was the 3 of December 2012. But the most important for me, it's what is common between Bulgaria and Tunisia, because it's psychological. When we go to a new place, everyone, he wants to uh, look for common points and not for different points. And why? It's psychological to feel uh, safer, to feel that you are in your country, with your friends, etc. So I found too many common points between Bulgaria and Tunisia. 
The first one, on your language, your lovely language, use some Arabian word, like portakal, like bustan, like chai, <laughs> but use too many French words also. As he told me, Professor Anthony Golubov, 16% of your language is with French origin, like boulevard, pantalon, trottoir, portemonnaie, garage, stage, <laughs> college. And, uh, <laughs> so I don't find it uh, really a uh, big difference between Bulgaria and Tunisia. And the most important thing, it's in the both country where you go, you find the goodness of the people. I see and I feel that I am welcome in Bulgaria. Everyone, oh, it's okay, if you want, you can help me. So I have some problem really on uh, the name of streets of the big, uh, in the first days, because everything is in a Cyrillic alphabet. But thanks God, now I know I can read in uh, Cyrillic alphabet because it's very important. <laughs> and, <laughs> okay. So the next slide, it's what do you know about Tunisia? I've met too many people in Bulgaria. The first one, he told me, oh, you come from Africa, but you are not black. <laughs> yeah, because I am North Africa, and <laughs> North Africa is an Arabian country. Some people, they know only, oh, do you still use camels in the Sahara, or there is cars in Tunisia? No, we have both. We have camels and we have cars. And the other one, he asked me, Oh, do you have crocodiles, tigers, lions, <laughs> elephants? It's Africa, yeah. It's damaged because we don't have those uh, <laughs> kindly animals. Some people, <laughs> they know only one thing. Oh, Tunisia, it's a very famous, terroristic place. And uh, where are you from exactly? Oh, I am from Tunis, but my native city is uh, Rajish and Mahdiya, and it's a touristic place also. Oh, you know this place. You have very nice... Uh, warm weather and uh, nice beaches, Mediterranean beaches. And one of them asked me, oh, all women in Tunisia, they wear the niqab? You can see nothing, all black, like ghosts? No, before, reality before the revolution, no one of uh, Tunisian women wear this dress. <laughs> but in reality now, it's up to you. You are free. If you want to wear the niqab, you can wear the niqab, this dress. If you want to wear uh, the hijab, it's okay. If you want to go to swim with bikini or with nothing, it's up to you also. <laughs> you are free. So it's not the real image from Tunisia. Because I want to say something more about ladies in Tunisia. The first Arabian flight captain, a woman flight captain, she is Tunisian. The first Women, uh, judge woman, she is Tunisian also. The first swim, Arabian first woman who drives the train, she is Tunisian. And we don't have polygamy in Tunisia. We are ni from 1985, only two years after the independence from France. So it's not like, oh, you can get four wives. No, I can't. <laughs> Thanks God. <laughs> so I think that the revolution of 2011 didn't give the Bulgarian people any new image about Tunisia. Because, oh, why you are not black? Uh, black? Why you don't have elephants? Why uh, women wear like this? So, and I don't know what is the problem exactly. Maybe Bulgarian people, they don't like news from world, world news. They concerned about uh, Bulgarian news, Bulgarian news maybe, I don't know. But maybe it's our mistake also, because we don't, make the new image after the revolution. But why we had that revolution? It's an accumulation for several things. Corruption. Where you go everywhere, oh, it's okay in administration. You need only one signature for an idiot director. But oh, today there is no network. Uh, the system, it's blocked. You can you come tomorrow, please? Oh, okay. And tomorrow after tomorrow, and tomorrow after tomorrow, and after tomorrow after tomorrow. If you will not pay something to get your papers, you can wait six months for only one signature. And about corruption and unemployment. The old regime in Tunisia told, oh, we have not unemployment, but too many workless people. No, we have only 5%. But the reality, it's more than 20%. And like we have unemployment, it's inflation. And about inflation, it's poverty. And when we have all this nice cocktail, it's normal to go to streets and to cry and to get tigage, go out to the president. 
when you have the sense and the feeling for inequality and oppression, it's normal to have people who tell you, go out. So it was the popular revolution on the 14th of January, 2011. This is our uh, ex-president. I don't want to comment this caricature, just I want to thank Melanie. She is a student in Bulgaria. He uh, gave me a gift, this caricature from the ex-president. It was the 13th of January on his famous last speech to his Tunisian people. He said, oh, okay, okay, today I understand you. And after 23 years, he understands us. Thanks God, not after 15 or more, uh, 50 or more. I understand you, I understand everyone in this country. I understand poor people, rich people, uh, old people, young people, I understand them. I understand even animals. Okay, I understand you. But I am not a son. I am not a son. I can't rise and cover all the country. Always there is but. I understand but, always. I don't know if you can imagine about this caricature. Something like this, like a marionette. Some black ghosts. It's not too clear for Bulgarian people because you don't know the situation in the past in Tunisia. But I think it's possible now to know and to imagine the last and the old situation in Tunisia before the revolution of 2012. So after one day, the 14th of January, 2011, as he told, oh, okay, I am not, I am not a son to rise over all the country. I am just a core dictator. I am a poor marionette. <laughs> so go bye-bye, uh, and he, go, uh, he left the country and uh, went to Saudi Arabia. And it was the result of our uh, revolution. I don't want to talk now about the current situation, but I want to show you a short video. Yeah? And I think you will... Uh, <laughs> okay. It's about four minutes. Finally, the dictator is gone. And now we are free, everything will be okay in our lovely country. Now we should choose the members of the National Constitutive Council. And why should we change the Representatives Council by a National Constitutive Council? What's the difference? What can I win as a simple citizen? Too much to win. You and your freedom. You don't feel free now. You don't feel like a hero when the world watch our country's news. Ah, oh, you're not patriot. You're a idiot guy. In the past we were in the same situation. Now it's different, because everyone treats you like a hero, as you are one of the wounded of our revolution, and it's an advantage for you. Yes, I'm a hero and I'm proud of it. You'll see that I'm right, everything will be okay, no one will regret our blessed revolution. I hope so because everything depends about the elections, and I'm not sure about all those guys who talk now about the patriots. From where they came, I've never seen them in the past. I don't know them all, so. But I'll choose the honest one, who gives us the joy of living in this country with progress and success. I hope so even that I'm not sure if there is someone like that, because the majority of them is selfish. Nothing is impossible now. If they will not defend the interests of the country and the people, we will say go out to them. I'm very optimistic and the time will show you the results of our revolution, dignity, freedom, happiness and wealth for everyone. Two years now after the revolution and you still in the same situation, one of the wounded of the revolution. I'm so excited to know your feelings, are you satisfied? I'm not happy about the current situation, economical social and political problems. Everyone thinks about his interests, how to save his place in the National Constitutive Council, how to convince people to choose him again in the next elections and how to win money without any attention to our problems and challenges. In the past, we were all against that ugly dictator. Our patriotism was our weapon to confront that rotten government. Now, we are divided into several groups and no one wants to to listen others. I feel sad now about our situation but I don't regret anything I did to give happiness to my people. We forget our basic requests about freedom, dignity and social development. 
Now, political parties talk about positions in the new government and they forget the only hero. In our revolution, the Tunisian people. Today they share everything like a cake while forgetting the poor people whom suffer about the economical crisis, inflation and unemployment. Now, they talk about faithful and unfaithful people. Some guys do anything without limits as a freedom of expression and others are against everything as it's not in our culture. Now, it's a big deviation for our revolution's requests and if we will not sit on the same table to talk, we will never reach our goals. You're right. We should accept everyone even if we don't share same ideas and opinions. We should share our love to our country. We should respect and love each other. Yes sure, we are in the same boat. I'm still optimistic and I think that everything will be okay.